What's up, Square Pimp Brigade? On this episode, we have comedian Quentin Eggs. He's here. We discuss uh, the value of being truthful and dealing with vitiligo. Uh, this was a good one. Yeah, you go deep into uh, a lot of, uh, you know, what it's like to be self-conscious about something. And then we also yeah. uh, keep it going on the Patreon, the bonus episode, which is available at patreon.com slash manschool202. That's where we do the bonus coverage. And we do another episode with Peyton. We continue with Quentin where we talk about, uh, we do some listener mail, right? And we answer questions uh, about what it's like to date an older lady and if you can have uh, multiple women and how to go about doing that. That's exclusively on the bonus show, which is at uh, patreon.com slash manschool202. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, what's up, y'all? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being broadcasted, and I, I am excited. Uh, what's going on, Harry? You ready to rock and roll? Yeah, man, absolutely. Absolutely. Born uh, ready to rock and roll. I don't even know why you asked me that. You know, know, the first I, things I do I, I when I get up in the morning is rock, is rock and, and roll. roll. And then rock and roll. I got Some you. days My I roll bad, first, I but most of the time I rock and roll. You do rock and you do roll. Yeah, I've been. I have known that for some, some quite some time. Uh, we got a we got a special show today, and this is uh, and I know I've said that five hundred times before, but this time I mean it. Um, good friend of mine, a uh, long time comic friend in the comic business. Give it up for Quentin Hags, y'all. Give it up for Quentin yeah, Hags. Quentin. Boom, 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 boom. What's up, Q? What's up? What's up, man? It's good to be here with you guys. How you Harry been? Dante, man. It's good to, good hey, to I'm, have I'm, you, bud. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been a fan of the show. I'm glad I get a chance to speak a little bit about uh, some of these topics. Uh, that's dope. That's dope. It's uh, now here's a here's a funny thing is with with Q and uh, Q Q has been um, Q Q's been around me for as long. Like I've been doing comedy 22 years. I don't know how long you got in. You got in uh, Q. I've been around 34. 34 years. Wow, okay. man. Yeah. So, You've so seen Q's it all change. Around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then, uh, and what, but every once in a while, a, a new Jack gets a chance to give, to give Q, uh, and I think something that really, I mean, we were always cool. Me and Q was cool. But I think the thing that kind of bonded us, and you tell me if I'm wrong, was so Q started going through the vitiligo. And uh, by what year did you start going through the vitiligo? Uh, it's been officially 10 years, so 2012. Yeah, 2012. Now, did you? Oh, no. Is that me? Am I frozen here? Oh, no. Took so, something happened. Yeah, I got cut. I got cut out for some reason. So sorry, uh, man. Just start started up again. I apologize. So so Q Q and I got cool because Q when Q started doing the vitiligo, it was you know I it, I'm assuming it just smarts it starts out small and then it just it it keeps going. But it, what is it? Do you know what it is? Um, I mean, do they understand why you lose the pigmentation? Well, the, the, the terminology behind vitiligo is um, you develop an auto, it's autoimmune disease. Okay. And what it does is it kills, your melanocytes die off. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that kills off your pigmentation cells. Mm -hmm. So uh, little by little, you start seeing patches of color going. Mm -hmm. Now, with me, it got even worse. Because sometimes, you know, if you nick yourself shaving or, you know, something yeah, like yeah. that, if I got a scratch yeah. around a dark area, the color, the, the skin would heal, but the color wouldn't come back. Oh, okay. Wow. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the so thing. Now, with... So now, you know what I'm saying? So now, it just, it just pro... so now it just progressed that, you know, it's, I'm just losing color. But, it, you yeah. know, I've adjusted to it over the years. Well, it, the thing with, so this is the thing with me and, me and uh, Q. Q, Q was wearing makeup, right? 
to cover the spots. And I and I get how that would be the case when it was small spots. But I just one of the things about comedy, where the fuck did Harry go? Harry left. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he went. He went to go check his skin. Yeah. Um, <laughs> how are you? You went to check his skin. And see if oh yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm still, I'm still Latino technically. So one of the, one of the things that happened was uh, Q was Q was wearing makeup, right, to cover it up the little spots because it was little spots. But then it got it got to be, you know, just it progressively. You know, you lose color more and more and more, and and so then he got to the point where Q was doing he Q's ears. He was working on his ears and his hair, sometimes his hairline, and 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 one of the things about and I always say this about you know I always talk about true wisdom is the understanding of underlying concepts, how they relate to situations that seem irrelevant but really are not. Meaning, once you understand basic fundamental principles. If you, if you, um, if you understand those principles and you reapply those principles over and over again, you can apply them to other aspects of your life that that it may not, whether it's dating, relationship, or business. One of the things about women and comedy is truth is is the most important thing. You know, we talk about ace being authenticity, credibility, and empathy, and you got to, you know, in order to be funny on stage, you got to live your truth. You got to be honest about your truth. Don't get me wrong. There are plenty of funny guys who are liars. <laughs> you know, they do fine in the comedy business because they've learned to fool people. There's always a sucker born every minute. But people that, especially when it comes to art, uh, the truth in art is something that that reverberates in a way that nothing else does truth in art, truth in women, truth in life. You know, I'm an advocate, uh, advocator of truth. And not to say that you can't wear makeup or something, but I felt like at the time when when the vitiligo really started kicking in on you, it was almost like you were driving yourself crazy trying to, trying to wear the makeup and try to cover everything up. And And I was saying to you, and you and I had a conversation where I was like, this is who you are. You're covering up who you are. And you gotta, I go, not only that, but um, sure, people will, anything that's different, people will kind of, you know, they'll they'll take a step back initially, but they get comfortable about it. And then when they, when you're comfortable about it, you allow them to be comfortable about it. And then they can ask you questions and not ask you questions and not want to offend you because, and then they, they get to see your humanity in a real place. And you, do you remember when we had that conversation too? Yeah. We, we was at the bar at Dangerfields. I remember that. Yeah. 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 And, and the thing was, I could just see that you were kind of in pain because here's the thing. I went through the same same pain when I started losing my hair. Maybe that's not the same thing, but I mean, at the time, my hair, I was losing my hair, I was losing my hair, and I kept, like, uh, you know, I would go to a barber, and I would be like, I need you to do medium on the side and low here and try to even it up, and it was like a whole... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I need you to create some valleys on the top to, yeah, yeah, so and, that there's it was, a shadow. It was, it, was, it was so... And I couldn't... And I just couldn't... Um, Deal I with it? Yeah, I could. I just was so much time and effort. And then once I shaved my head, the relief that I had when I shaved my head, and I was like, "This is what it is. I'm bald. I'm taking charge of it. I'm gonna own it, and I'm gonna be who I am." And once I did that, um, it, everything worked out better. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. I, and I kind of felt like. You were in that place, which is with, with, you know, with, with the vitiligo, where it was like you were so, it was such a big thing to, to kind of fill in these gaps. And, and one of the things about Q is Q's a really good guy. He's always been a really good guy. And the measure of Q's character is not the vitiligo. You know, one of the things that I say to dudes all the time when they lie about their height, like you get a guy, he's 5'5", five, five, and he'll, He's like lying, say he's five, six, five, seven. 
in a, in his in a in a way, it's almost as if he said he's saying, "I um I'm not uh, the measure of my life is those two inches. Like I'm not good enough because I'm two I'm inches fucked. shy. I'm too I'm shy two of short. being of being good enough. Yeah, and so you lie about it when the measure of no human being is ever two inches about anything." Dick size, height, you name it. It's not, that's not who you are. We are so much more. And, and me knowing Q since, I mean, Q, Q's always been kind to me in comedy and always been a good dude. And I just felt like um, we're in a situation where um, I, I just felt like you had to own it. I mean, if you could speak to that a little bit, Q. Well, well basically, uh, your conversation with me, yeah. My conversation with uh, another male friend—I'm not going to name him because we don't mm. speak anymore for political reasons. Mm. And a young, a young lady I dated, and actually God. In terms of the young lady, I was still putting on makeup, right? And I would come spend—I would spend time with her. And one night, I stayed at her house, mm -hmm. and I was kind of embarrassed to take the makeup off, right? And she kind of like, you know, just. Dude, I, I don't care whatever you look like. Right. You look like I can get over it. Right. So between between all these different conversations, in uh, 2016, mm -hmm. which is maybe that was four years after doing the makeup. Right. I had an epiphany, mm -hmm. and I said to myself, uh, and I, I I don't know if you heard about the show I did at Danger Fields. It was July Fourth weekend. I heard about it. I heard. What it. is this? I didn't yeah. hear about it. What, what well, happened? technically, I did. A, Tony Bavacqua, the owner, let me do my own show. It was supposed to be like my anniversary in comedy. But mm -hmm. I secretly told one or two comics, I'm going to take the makeup off mm -hmm. on stage. I want, oh, you, you took like, it off on stage? On stage. That was oh, my wow. closing bit. Okay. My closing bit, because my, my, my family knew, some of the people that knew I, I had makeup on, but right. they never saw me without it. Right, right. So what I decided to do was, all right, JP Justice hosted. I had other comics do sets. I came up and did 45 minutes. Now, at the end, I started talking about the heroes of my life. I mm -hmm. said, there's Richard Pryor, Muhammad Ali, and Harold Lloyd. And I described how each one influenced me. People said, who, Harold Lloyd? Who the hell is that? I said, no, Harold yeah, Lloyd was silent a film silent film star. Yeah. You know, Harry. Yeah. At one time, he was bigger than Charlie Chaplin. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. legendary. He, he did, he did a, a photo. It was probably like a, a press photo op that he did where he was holding a bomb it was supposed to be a fake bomb he lit it with a cigarette and as he pulled away so you know what this is not gonna work it blew up in his hand he lost these two fingers and part of his really? thumb so people thought oh it's over for him mm -hmm. and he can't, became a bigger star after that and of course we know the story about ali he got parkinson's and still after boxing he traveled the world as a, you know ambassador of peace mm -hmm. richard pryor was doing comedy in a chair uh-huh one of his last albums, he even said the only good thing about having uh, 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 MS was that when he jerks off, he, he doesn't really have to worry about moving his hands. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm saying that these guys had things that were debilitating to them physically. This is not physical. This is mm -hmm. all synthetic. I'm not. I don't, it's it's not synthetic. It's, it's uh. What's, yeah, I know the word. You know, I'm trying to think. Uh, yeah, it's uh. External, it's not external. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's superficial. Superficial. Right. External. So, well, anyway, right. it's not it's not killing. Right. It's you have your health. Me. Yeah. 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 So what I did was, as I was telling the story of my three heroes, I had a, a, a box of wet naps. I just started taking the makeup off. Mm -hmm. And people would listen to me, but people were like, I see people in the audience like doing like this. It's like they didn't know. A lot of people. Well, you knew mm -hmm. because I told you, but a lot of people to this day never knew I wore makeup because I I. I I put it on well enough that I was able to cover it. But then I said to myself, you know what? I can't keep doing this because now it's on my hands, on my arms, right. on my neck. Right, right. right. I said, I got I, I to gotta, I gotta address it because the more I was losing it, the more I makeup I had to put on. So 15, 20 minutes a day of putting on makeup became 30, mm -hmm. 40 minutes. And I can't right. afford to be late. In the summertime, right. I, don't know how, I don't know how ladies do it. Yeah. You put makeup on, you go out in that heat. I don't yeah. know how you do it. I was... I would go and bring somebody and up. At, you gotta yeah, like I would reapply. go bring somebody on stage and run down to the green room at, at mm. Dangerfields and reapply and powder my makeup. 
Mm-hmm. I felt so weird. I said, you know what? I can't do this anymore. So I, I just told myself, Q, uh, even if you don't put in your act, you got to you gotta just be who yourself. When I did that and I did the show, I got a stand ovation. I walked out on the street. I felt like I took all, mentally, I felt I took up all my clothes and walked around naked. Mm-hmm. That's wow. how it affected me. It made right. me feel naked. But then as I went and like, we so you're uncomfortable for you were comfortable first. It's, it's more than uncomfortable. You know what it was? It's like it's almost like if you you lose a your arm or a hand, mm-hmm. and you know yeah. you don't want to show your friends. You you, you don't know how they're gonna take it, right? So you always you always hey that that or you have like oh it also is physically part and of you for you're, so you're, long. Well, I mean, the thing it's is, literally part of you. you. The worst part about it, people knew about it, and folks were curious, and I never wanted to share the real me, mm-hmm. even like close friends like Dante I would never only one time I did that to Vinny Vinny the bartender he said Q mm-hmm. what's the big deal I said dude I have to wear makeup he said why I'll be right back I went downstairs cleaned my face came upstairs he went whoa I said that's why I wear makeup yeah but people, he's Italian people, they do that for a lot of stuff yeah they they're, go they're well for everything yeah. Ew. But, 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 see, but, but see, he knew me. It's a yeah fooper. but he knew me he knew me for a, he knew me for a long time so he knew that I was sensitive about it so basically what happened was Six years ago, I just said, you know, I got to be who I am. And if I could be using it in my act, it'll make me different. I don't want to be the guy to do the same generic shit that everybody else does. And a lot of comics who have it are like, oh, don't talk about it. Right. Well, you know, it's just... Stand-up comics. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I'm saying there's... And, there, and there's a handful of comics. Yeah. And I will actually want... I wanted to get some of the people together, like Khal- Khalees Hawkins. Yeah. Uh, and, and Joe Rogan has been a lot. A lot of people have it. But they don't really want to talk about it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, if I can't embrace it, if I can embrace it on the street or just walking around in stores and people staring at me, I went, I had to I had to perform in Prague and I went through customs in Moscow. It was a fucked up itinerary. Can I say the word mm-hmm. F? Yeah. Sure, yeah. yeah right. it, was, it was it was a fucked up itinerary. I was going to Prague from New York. I had to go to Moscow, switch planes, come two and a half hours back to Prague. I'm in Moscow and I'm walking. Not wearing makeup. And I'm walking, it's like, wow, are they staring at me because I'm the only black person in this airport? Or are they standing at me because of the vitiligo? Then I got yeah. to change into my other plane. Um, the lady would look at my passport. My passport, I was still wearing makeup. This is mm-hmm. like 2000, right. maybe 18, 19. I hadn't right. got my new passport yet. She looked at me, looked at the passport. This is a true story. I said on stage yeah. when I got to Prague. She said, excuse me, sir. She said, wow, what is wrong with your face? You have disease? <laughs> Everybody behind me, like, we're not getting on a plane where somebody might have a disease. They didn't right, know right. what this was. Right, I right. said, ma'am, um, how can I how can I explain it? Um, uh, Michael Jackson. Oh, oh Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Yes, yes, yes. Michael Jackson. Stamped it right away. Right, right. Stamped it. Stamped right. it and everything was okay. But right. everybody kept staring at me because I was the one that they thought had the disease because she said it. And then people right. started talking in, in like their native it. language. Right, right. right. So right. Things, things like that, you know, it's almost like... He, he, it's like the elephant in the room. That's why when Dante, when you see me, the first thing I joke about when I go on stage is about my face, my skin. Right, right. right. Like if it's hot, I say, whoa, it's hot outside. Isn't it hot? Shit, it's so hot. I used to be black. That's how hot it is outside. Mm. I see stuff like that. So yeah. Yeah, the first thing about, I see people go, my yeah, it's a way of this. disarming, yeah, way of disarming them about it, that you're comfortable with it. And because, yeah. you know, um, you're comfortable with it, then they can be comfortable with it, which is yeah, which is pretty awesome. I mean, um, and, and I think this is a you know we're literally talking about an autoimmune uh, disease, but what we're talking about is that that the same thing people go through without vitiligo, where they start to think that because they are lacking something or in their mind they feel like they're lacking something uh they've they've gotten to a point where they're hiding behind something oh. else or i mean i went through feel- it with weight with yeah. weight for me was that thing of like you know you feel less than because of the weight and you know it's just something that was always on my mind i always felt like it affected everything from women to business and all that and you realize that it's it's a it's a factor but it's not the only factor Right. Nobody, nobody, nobody. Look, if somebody dumps you or doesn't want to talk to you because of one thing in your personality or one characteristic, that's probably a person that you don't want to be with in the first place. 
if somebody can focus, and, and don't get me wrong, people can have their preference. I mean, I know girls that only like tall guys or whatever, whatever, you know, whatever the situation would never talk to a short guy or I never talk to a guy who's too pretty or whatever. I mean, it, it, it's endless what people's preference are, but understand, I think when you understand that nobody likes everybody, everybody has somebody that don't, that you don't do it for, you know, that you definitely don't do it for. Um, by the way, the term vitiligo has been ruined by uh, the boondocks because yeah, Uncle yeah. Ruckus, remember it's, Uncle it's Ruckus? Reverse he, riddle, vitiligo. He goes, I got re vitiligo because yeah. he doesn't want to be black. The Uncle Ruckus yeah. character is like, I got re vitiligo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, vitiligo. I always think of Uncle Ruckus for some reason. Yeah. So this was an interesting thing to me. One of the things, I mean, because a lot of times we'll have comics on and we'll talk comedy, but I mean, the, the podcast in general is more about life than it is about comedy. I, I think sometimes with comedy, we learn how to live life through the way that we pursue comedy, uh, or at least when we pursue comedy in the right way, when it's righteous and truth and incredible and empathetic and all of those things. I think that's what makes you funny is the, the truth that you're talking. And, and, I, and I, it's mm -hmm. interesting how, you know, it's an extreme situation to all of a sudden be black and then all of a sudden you're constantly changing color and losing your, your melanin. But to the, to the point that there's, you know, there's nobody that I would know that doesn't speak of Quentin in terms of his character, his kindness and, and who he is as a person. And so we all know him for that. I mean, the fact that your skin tone is really not the, the point because there's so much, you have so much more to offer people in general. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, you know what's good about what you said? That is good when people have known you for a while, but people that meet you at the point where you're going through the transition, mm -hmm. they don't understand it. They don't understand it at all because till this day, I still have people, I was at, I was at a show in Long Island, uh, Memorial Day weekend, lady wanted to touch my skin said did it hurt when he peeled off people don't understand and i find myself constantly trying to explain what this mm. is off stage and on and on stage that it doesn't hurt did my, I have, i'm 60 years old and i have smooth i don't have any wrinkles right nothing. right right but people want to touch it to see it's like oh did it can i take that little piece off right there there's nothing to take mm. off right 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 they don't right. They, yeah they don't they don't get it so they don't understand I don't get what it, it is yeah, I don't get offended by stares anymore. To me, it's like, it, it, but people that have known me when I was in comedy in my 30s and 40s, and then they see me now, I've met people that met me after I had vitiligo that accepted, mm -hmm. oh, they see a picture of me when I was like in my late 30s. That was you when you had, um, when you were, they told we still, when you were totally dark. I said, mm -hmm. well, that was how it was back then. So it's a point of feeling, it's almost like when women in Hollywood, when they get older and they notice, oh, I got to get right. a nose job, I got right, bags right. in my, they, they, they feel very uncomfortable in the business right. because they're changing, so they got to fix it. And some right. and they know, they know that they've made whatever success they've made that success uh, based on how they look at the moment. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, it's not, yeah. so they feel like people are not going to accept them as in the change you know you want to be in the change and the reality is that one of the things that you you that we will all have is change i mean change is it change is inevitable so if you're not prepared for that change um it um you you're getting left behind because the change is coming that you're going to get older you're going to your body is going to change. Who you are changes as a person, and uh, and those things have to be considered. I, I even do it in this in the sense of death. Now, like Harry and I have talked about this because I lost both my parents, and mm -hmm. and I, I don't have. And one of the things that I've learned, I mean, I don't know for how lucky I was, but I mean, my like I always say, my father had me very late. My father had me when he was forty nine years old. My father was born in nineteen twenty. Um, he had 16 brothers and sisters. Each one of those 16 brothers and sisters were probably married at least twice. And um, the thing about it is that, um, how do I put it? Um, so from a very young age, I went to funerals. Like I've been going to funerals. Funerals was a time when I got a chance to see my new cousins. 
Like, cause we didn't have a lot of family reunions, but somebody was always dying in the family because we had a big family. And because I, I was on the tail end of that family, the first, my father was basically the first generation and, and they, and he was, had me at 49. And so my, I had an aunt that was born, I had an aunt that was born in the 1800s. Right. Um, mm. and so, uh, so I was always funeral and death was something that was always around me. And one of the things that I've learned from that, you know, in terms of just emotionally adapting is that uh, everybody dies. Do you know what I mean? Nobody gets out of this thing alive. Nobody gets through life alive. We all are going to die. There's, time is the commodity. And if we don't access that commodity in a progressive and a, and a, way, and a productive way, then it's only going to be us that's looking at each other, looking at ourselves in the mirror and wondering why we didn't we didn't uh, do what we don't. Hey, Q, can you turn you're on your phone or on your laptop? I'm on my phone. Can you turn it the other way? Portrait. What do you mean? T turn the phone. Oh, OK. Yeah. So we got a bigger, a bigger, uh, oh, so, okay. so, you know, so it's funny. It's, you know, I lost my dad first, but I was really, even though losing my mom was even harder for me because I was closer to my mom, but all the people that I had lost, I, I had literally gotten to the point where I was ready th that I understood that people die, you know, I mean, it seems like something really ridiculous to have to accept but people die and they will leave you they will come in your life and the important the only thing that you can do to stop that is nothing but what you can do is you can prepare yourself to understand that people the the time and the effort and the time that you have with people is most important and if you if you lose that if you waste that right um that's your fault and that's what you have to contend with, the fact that you've wasted these moments that are important. And so a lot of times, you know, like even, you know, we get so caught up in what is going to be as opposed to living what's happening right now. Yeah, really um, yeah. And that's that's, you know, that's a mistake. I, in my opinion, anyway, it's a mistake. And so it's like all the years of you, you know trying to just not feeling you. I just was, I remember when I saw you without the makeup, I was just really had this proudness and elation. And, and I was saying, because I've always liked you as a person. I've always thought that character wise, the, that your character was, had depth and uh, depth and meaning and structure to it. And, and I just felt like you were in pain in a sense, covering this up when, not thinking that you could be who you were as yourself. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it yeah, was, you, hit it, you hit it right on the head. And, and that's why I said it's only, I think, because of, I got it late in life and late in my career that yeah. you feel the abrupt change. Yeah. And, and I didn't, I wasn't really ready to make the change to adapt. So mm -hmm. I was hiding. Yeah. I was still doing my comedy, still smiling, but at the end of the day, I was hurting inside because I wanted, did anybody notice my makeup? You know, now, was, I it, was, was it that painful for you? Was it really painful for you? Like when you were, like I always say, when you you go home and you're in that room by yourself and the, the shadow from the ceiling fan is whipping across your face. Like, what was your feelings in that moment? Going home every day, and I'll be honest with you, the first maybe year and a half, it was rough because about a month I was suicidal. Really. Really, was that bad? And that's crazy because you 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 always kept a, a a happy face on it. You know what I mean? You always had a top hat and tails on that kind on that depression. You know what I mean? Well, so you, you, you know why? Because at the end of the day, I would think about it, but because I'm very spiritual and very religious, and I was brought up to be very spiritual, very religious, I kind of talked myself out of it. But then you come home and you wipe the makeup off, and I look in the mirror in the bathroom and punch the wall, and keep saying. Why me? Why is this happening now? It's like, I'm doing commercials. I'm doing all this good stuff. Why is this happening now? Mm -hmm. And as I got older with this, I said, well, if you can't do on camera commercials, Q, do voiceovers. Yeah. 
And that's another thing that the pandemic has shown me. Mm-hmm. If you if there's no productions happening, you could still do voiceovers. Yeah, yeah. You can do you could do voiceover because I was signed with a company. I can do stuff in their studio, and then they would send it in for me. Now, in what's, audition, what's, interesting, in. what's interesting too is you know there's a lot of models and stuff that have vitiligo. That that, that who they well, are Harlow, as. Go ahead. Well, Winnie Harlow, if you notice some of her interviews. As proud as she was to have done what she, she always said, why can't I do more? Why am I only seen as one thing? A, a model of vitiligo. Sing, I can act. I'm not, if you look at any commercial, I've seen one commercial where it was for um, Old Navy. Either Old Navy or Target. And they mm-hmm. show some kids dancing. And one little girl had vitiligo on her legs. Mm-hmm. But in terms of prominent commercials, you're not going to see. As a matter of fact, my last no, but I think you're seeing it more and more now. I think there's a there's a. I mean, it's well, it, well, but but it's it's the market. That's why you see more right. interracial couples. I yeah. saw a, a black guy and a Chinese woman, and they showed their kid, right, in, in a serial commercial. So now it's more accepted. But like ten years ago, right, I, my right. last I, I I did a fetish commercial, and I did my own makeup. The makeup artist, she was going to meet you know all your face down to get you ready for makeup. I said no no no, I already have makeup on. But I had a spot on my hand mm-hmm. that they did a close up because I was holding a baby monitor. And, and the door said, What, cut, cut, cut? What is that on his hand? I said, Oh, it's, it's a birthmark. And she knew. So she ran over and she had mixed the color real quick. She said, I'm so sorry. I didn't notice it. I said, I didn't either. Mm-hmm. And she covered it. No, no, we, we, we covered it. We covered it. Just mm-hmm. like that, he saw a little spot. And it was like, Stop, you know, stop, stop, the, uh, stop the music. Yeah. What's yeah, that? Yeah. So even them, they're looking at it as like, we didn't know he had that. What the hell is that on your hand? Something yeah. so small and so insignificant made a big deal. Yeah. And also, it is it is show business where you don't want to, even the slightest, dumbest thing could derail something. It's, it's the weirdest things derail stuff. And when you're struggling, you don't want anything to be derailed. You don't want even the slightest possibility that they'll, there'll be somebody to make some decision or question it for even half a second. So that makes you double that's, that's self-conscious. Why- that's why the reason why I think I was more afraid of things because, and I hate to put it in this way. I'm not mad at Michael Jackson, but he is the most famous person to have this disease, mm-hmm. excuse me, condition. Right. And he walked back on it. When Oprah got, sat him down to talk about his vitiligo, mm-hmm. he kind of like, well, you know, well, you know, he kind of like fluffed around a little bit and that was it. Right. He never did any special, he never did any special uh, what they call PSAs about it? Nothing. Mm-hmm. He spent his life in denial. It said ninety percent of his skin loss, and it's right. the reason why he wore some makeup because he was coloring up lighter. He couldn't he couldn't color down anymore. He was ninety percent right. white. He right, was almost right. an albino. Right. So he had a worldwide voice that he never used. Right. And right. and and not saying I'm at anywhere near worldwide, but I want to be a voice. I want to be out there when people. They had World Vitiligo Day this past right. Friday, right? No, right. past Saturday, and right. I wish I could have been there to be an entertainer to say, "Listen, you can have singers, you can have models, a comic talking about this, so everybody can see that we're okay with it. It's not just people marching yeah. where they have a Facebook group. Hey, hey, what? Um, how do you guys feel about having it? No, we got a comic that talks about it and educates people who don't know what this shit is because right. people out there, people out there are very ignorant. Trust me, I have, I have said some people's like, what, what? They don't understand what. As a matter of fact, when Tracy Morgan has stopped by with uh, Roberto Vanderpool at Dangerfields, he said, "Q." You got that vertigo? I didn't know you had that vertigo. Yeah. It, but it was it was so funny. I put that that term in my act mm-hmm. because I didn't take it as an insult. I just said, all right, you know what? It's funny. So I yeah. use that term in my act now. And I try to talk about it more and more and more. So when I go on the road, like Dante, you see me do like yeah. 10, 15 minute spots. But when I go on the road, I do a lot more information about this. Right, right. Because I don't want people to see me as just some guy telling jokes. I want somebody to see me, hey, this is a guy who's funny, he's entertaining. And I left thinking, of, wow, I have a friend that has lupus and I have right. a friend that has this. And I, wow, I didn't know that you, wow, okay. Right, right, right. There are people out there, they may not be dying, but they're suffering from things. You know, I got a little hump in my nose and I'm thinking the world's going to end. And this yeah. guy's on stage and he's talking about his life and how he's dealing with it. And, you know, I tell people, I can never, I can never do a crime. Yeah, <laughs> I can't. I can't rob. I can't rob nobody's store. I'm an easy profile. Right, right. You know, so right. I talk about. I talk about my skin and how it affects me, but I also like to leave people thinking about. Wow, I didn't know that. 
Because right. if you just go up there and tell Joe, that's why I told one comic, say, if you go up there and just tell joke, 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 and people walk out there and you say, what was your favorite joke I told? Um, 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 I don't remember none of it. That, yeah. mean, that means they walked out there knowing nothing about you. Yeah. They just saw, they saw a handful of comics. They had some laughs. They paid some money for drinks and food and they're going home. That's the thing I love about Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle, regardless if you think he's controversial, he'll leave you walking out thinking about something he said. Mm. Cat Williams to an extent is like that too. These guys will go out there and say something that you may say, oh, that's controversial, but you'll walk out and you'll sit with your buddy at a bar next to the next to the theater and you'll discuss mm -hmm. it. It's a thought provoking thing that he just did. So what do you right. think about what he said about the, the transsexuals? He ain't being mean to them, man. What? And it becomes a conversation because he has something in your head and your friend said that made you want to talk about it. I want to be so, that person that, wow, you know. Let me ask you this. Have you ever thought about doing it? Because I know, I mean, if if I'm me and Harry, I kind of think a lot of the time. Like, I mean, that would be the one man to do a one man show and to take the makeup off. You know what I mean? I mean, things are really different now in that yeah. the, gate, the gatekeepers. So much open. You can do whatever. Right? Yeah. But the gatekeepers have re removed themselves. So like even that would be like such a thing to market your career that you you know, at the at the end of your act, you start you're telling jokes, but you're taking the makeup off. It would be crazy, be because it's different. I mean, you know, I've heard yeah. people say, "Oh, I wish I had uh, yeah. palsy," <laughs> you know, to, to to do my comedy. People have talked about that, um, and 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 having these these differences to 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 make them stand out. But what's what's really interesting is. Um, I'm curious about how long did it take you to get comfortable with it? Like, are, well, first of all, let me ask you this. Are you comfortable with it? And how long did it take you to get comfortable? It, it took me to take the makeup off to get comfortable. Right. Okay. People, but people so how much far like, after you didn't wear makeup were, was it? Okay. I'm comfortable. Uh, I would say it took total comfortable. It took about a month. A month. Well, wow, that's not yeah. bad. That's not bad. And you just got yeah. comfortable Be with the whole thing. Because in that in that four weeks, mm -hmm. I would get up and I realized I gotta put makeup on today. Right. That's right. 40 minutes. I got I gotta worry about. Right, right, right. So and it's you a get practical. on the train. Oh yeah. It's it's like and then all of a sudden you get on the train and people start staring at you, especially kids. And I I developed a way of not getting feeling defensive. I would smile back. Mm -hmm. Now go blue, blue, blue. I just smile. I say, you know, okay. Oh, he's cute. How is he? I don't. I don't get angry anymore right, right. about people staring at me. Now, did you get angry before, or was there ever a time that you got angry? In the first month, because it it, it wasn't so much people; it was me. Mm -hmm. If I was on a bus and I heard people laughing and giggling, I thought it was about me. Mm -hmm. They could be. They could be like looking at something or just talking about something. They're not even thinking about right. me, but right. I took it Taking personal person. because I'm. Here. Because I hear them laughing and I'm thinking mm. it's about me. So it got right. to the point that I, I had to go, all right, it's not about me. Mm -hmm. And if and if I meet someone, I used to go to bars after Danger Fields, and one woman came to me and said, like, Oh my God, your your face is beautiful. Mm. And I'm like, okay. Right. I'm mm -hmm. getting I'm getting I'm getting compliments. So I was like, it's 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 a it's a burden off your chest thinking, why didn't I do this earlier? Mm -hmm. And, and, that, and that was after that first month. As a matter of fact, when he came and shot uh, the Joker scenes at Dangerfields, mm -hmm. I met the makeup artist and she gave me this whole like color palette because she she went, oh, can I put some on you? I want to, oh, I, I think I know how to cover that. I said, yeah, I don't, I don't wear makeup anymore. And this was mm -hmm. like 2017, right, 19, right. Yeah, right. yeah, so she, she gave it to me and I found it recently and it's all dried out. Mm -hmm. I, since 2016, I have not put makeup on. No. no, never felt like. As a matter of fact, if I put makeup on now, I would feel strange. Now, how how um, how did that affect women and your love life and 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 that stuff? Did it was it an advantage? Was it a disadvantage? Was it? It was. It's actually funny because uh, I, I, was, I was after I had finished the show, this older woman came up to me. She said, "Excuse me, um." Is it on your your your, your PP too? I said, first of all, sweetheart, I'm black. It's a dick. Mm -hmm. Black men don't have PPs. Mm -hmm. And I said, 
I said, technically, you ever seen like a big, long chocolate stick with a little white tip? Mm -hmm. That's my dick. And she said, mm -hmm. oh, my goodness. Oh, she started right. getting all like. So right. that was a funny moment. So to me, it's like it's fun now when people ask me questions about it. Right. Because right. I at, at, at 10 years after finding out I had it, I feel comfortable enough. I can I can go on a date. I can meet people. I can go to comedy clubs, clubs I've never been at before. And I don't think, oh, they don't want to hire me because of this. I don't have that negative thought anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so my whole thing is that I'm just trying to um, reinvent myself to use this as a gift in my comedy and beyond. Well, the one man show would be perfect for that then, for sure. Well, to the get on, that the out problem, there, yeah. the, the only problem with the theme of that one man show. Now, I'm not going to name the comic, but I think you know him, Dante. If, if I say what is a guy who pretend to be German. And his whole show, he's like he's talking like I'm German and, the, you know, this is wonderful to be here. And I'm so glad um, you talk know, about um, this country. With See, the one, name with names. The, one with the shirt. Yeah, he said uh, he, that was another thing. He had, he had one arm. Oh, yeah, one arm? No, that was another gimmick. That he I wish he would he just would tell me the name. I don't really, you know, this is too much right. work. <laughs> if he listens to this, I'm, I'm, I'm giving him prop. Jim Myers. Jim Myers out of Long uh -huh. Island used to do this German stick. Uh -huh. He'd come out and then and then at the end of his show, my name is really Jim Myers. I'm, I'm from, you know, mm -hmm. you know, wine dance, Long Island. I'm, right, I'm not really right. German. Right, right. But then after a while, you can't only see that show but one time. Right, 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 right. So if I do a show, where I take the makeup off. Those people, the shock is gone. It's like it's like it's like right, right. once you but see when you oh, when, when you that's why when you do it as a as a one man show, it's kind of a thing you go to see one time, <laughs> and then you take yeah. that. Then you kind of take that. It's kind of like when Tig Tig Natara took her shirt off and just had no fucking after she had the the mastectomy. Uh, mastectomy. She had double mastectomy. And oh, she. She had and no she, breast. She yeah, and she took the shirt off. I mean, and just walked around without no tits on. Right. Well, see that that might work for her only because is that she can go and do another special, and people's like, we we I want to see that. I didn't I didn't see. Well, that. Yeah, but I know. So but I mean, I, I think whether I'm just saying. I mean, like Tig doesn't do that anymore. She does a special. Yeah. She just does. But it's it's the thing that kind of launched her. First, the thing was her having de being diagnosed with with double double breast cancer, and then she did this kind of set to talk about it, and that kind of yeah. really was the thing that launched because it was so significant. So it wasn't something that she was looking to do forever. It was just something that she did. It launched her career, and then it was just kind of something that she was known for, you know. So yeah. I mean, I, I guess that, but I mean. Um, I mean, it, it would be good as much a one we, uh, show, but the, we want to do. Okay. Uh, we're gonna do some stuff behind the scenes. All right, we good. Yeah, we got that? five more minutes before the, and then we got. Uh, then we got to do Patreon. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. So, I didn't mean to keep all these topics on me. I'm no, 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 no. no, 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 no. We, we, we got more to do. You. We got more. Um, but let me ask you this, Quentin. Uh, before all that happened, because that happened in later in your life, right? You're, you're talking about, you 50, know, I was fifty. Yeah. Okay. So, what was your life like before that dating life uh, the dating stuff i'm curious about because i know that's that's a big i mean thing. the only drawback to dating sometimes is like some women don't like to date comics because they think we're in the clubs we meet all these girls we're on the road we meet all these girls everything is about is a trust is issue uh. they want somebody more stable us is like you know i'm doing you know warm up for a tv show i'm doing commercials oh yeah i'm gonna i'm, be, I'm being in vegas for a week they thought, well, can I go with you? I said, no, you can't go with me because that's but double, that was double not, my that's not anything that has to do with your skin tone. That just was something about the business. Yeah. But, but he, that's what he said. I said before. Yeah, I was asking him about before uh, all that because I'm curious of, you know, what what yeah, is. So my life, my life was like, yeah. all right, I'm entertaining. And this is what it is. I mean, I was married at one time and then I after, you know, separation and, and then I was dating women. It wasn't about anything other than, you know, can you handle what I do? Now it was like, can you handle how I look? Mm hmm. Hmm. Which one was easier for you to deal with? Do you think? Uh, now, how I look. Yeah, but that's also maybe because, because you're more mature, just in general. You can handle probably both at this point. Oh yeah, I mean, some women, some women, even now, they don't. They used to revere comics when comics, but now it's like, well, if you ain't on the TV, how come you haven't done the TV shows? It's like, oh yeah, like I magically call up Seth Myers and, and get on the show. It's like, no, it's a process. So they don't think you should be. Well, look at Kevin Hart. Look at Dave Chappelle. Said, yeah, look at them. God bless them. They got where they needed to be. 
So yeah, if somebody says saying. that to me, then she's just stupid, and I don't really want to talk to her. She's just egg, dumb. Egg, egg, yeah, exactly, it's, it's exactly. Just, if somebody's ignorant to the business, they think, oh, and it's not even to the business. Comics. It's it's really like you know what you, when you're talking about Kevin Hart, you're talking about the top one percent of comics of all time, yeah. top earners of what. And so if you think that that is always that's the measure of whatever you're, you know, whether or not you've made it or not, it's the top 1%. It's really ridiculous. You know, it's really a ridiculous kind of thing. Um, you know, I, I think what's really interesting, I mean, you know what, and let's, let's talk about, I want to really dig into the dating stuff on the Patreon and talk about a few things, but is there anything you want to plug your social media? You got anything going on in them? We're going to do something on the Patreon afterwards. Yeah, if anybody wants to follow me, I, mean, uh, I, keep, I keep forgetting them. All right, if anybody wants to follow me, I'm on social media. You just put in Quentin Heggs, Q-U-E-N-T-I-N-H-E-G-G-S. I know I have comedian Q Heggs, and I think on another one. See, I, I have, I've made up these these little tags, but I don't remember them because I don't use yeah, them. No, but just, I mean, but you, I mean, as long as you pitch one, you can get them all. If, I mean, half the time, you, 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 uh, you know, you Google Quentin Heggs, they'll get everything. Yeah, Harry, talk long, to me. Uh, you could go to all my stuff is at Harry Trajani, and that's where all my stuff is. I'm posting more stuff on TikTok, which I'm I'm digging and having fun with. So sign up over there. Mm. Uh, you know, Google me. Y'all know how to get me. Um, and don't forget <laughs> to sign up for the Patreon. We're gonna do a little list in the mail uh, on the Patreon as well. Um, Tybb, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolutions being podcasted, and I am excited. I love y'all. Um, check us out on Patreon. Sign up for Patreon. Uh, Man School Two Hundred Two. I'm sorry, Patreon.com slash Man School Two Hundred Two. You want to sign up and we we answer questions and get a little deeper in behind the scenes. Uh, I'm out. Thanks, y'all.